semifinals. Which one of the four will be the winner? Who will have enough strength for the final? Who will earn the championship belt? March 30th, 2019. FIA World GP Volume 28. Fortune favors the brave. Kishinev Manej Arena. Online tickets. Afisha.md. Info. FIA.md. FIA Volume 28. March 30th. Watch live on FIA Fights TV. General Partner. Unite. Parte a Familiei Molt Telecom. My name is Mike Damas and welcome to FEA World Grand Prix. Here we go. Good evening and welcome to FEA World Grand Prix. The second part, FEA World Grand Prix Featherweight, a tournament Grand Prix final for the 65 category. Stanislav Renica against Christian Specku and Dimitri Sirbu against Francesco Pica will face each other in the semi-finals. Which one of the four will be the winner? Who will be enough strengths for the final? Who will earn the championship belt? And now, I would like to present you the hero of this evening. Introducing first to the stage from Moldova, Ion Urake! From Moldova, Artur Brinza! From Russia, Doka Gurmayev. From Moldova, Mina Manoli. From Turkey, Funda Alkaish. From Moldova, Nadezhda Kantir! From Serbia, Mihailo Kotovic! From Moldova, Maxim Bolato! From Romania, Christian Spetko. From Moldova, Stanislav Renica. From Italy, Francesco Pica. From Moldova makes a noise for Dimitri Surbo. And now, 
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of the Republic of Moldova. Find the sportsmen to get ready for the fight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present you the referee of this evening. First lateral judge, Ekim Oleg. Second lateral judge, Nani Mihai. Referee, Suhan Yulian. Third lateral judge, Lupushor Dumitru. Fourth referee, Grosso Andre. Supervisor, Mitake Mihail. And now, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the FEA World Cramp? Here we go. We already started it. Sunt Cristian Spetcu. Mă bucur că am fost invitat la această promoție. Urmăresc FEA de câțiva ani de zile. Mă bucur că am venit în, în Moldova și sunt pregătit să, să câștig fiecare meci în parte și să câștig centura, să o adaug la, la colecția mea de, de acasă. Introducing the first fight of the evening. This is a semi-final fight on the 65 kilogram, three minute, three round, one extra round, K1 rules. Calling first to the blue corner. He's coming from Romania. Please welcome to Christian Spetko. This should be a tremendous World Grand Prix. One for the history books, folks. All four competitors are very evenly matched up. In fact, FIA President Doreen Damir told me earlier today he has no idea who's going to win this thing. Everybody has an equal opportunity, he thinks, of walking home with that championship belt around their waist and becoming the very first FIA featherweight champion. First up, we've got Polo, Christian Spetsko of Romania. Uh, he is the most experienced fighter in the tournament and also the oldest at 29 years old from Bucharest, Romania. He says, I'm ready for any challenge. So it doesn't matter ladies to him at all who his the opponent spectacle. is now or later in the tournament. And now, ladies and gentlemen, calling his opponent to the red corner. What do you say? I'm 30, I'm favorite. Am o centură și mai vreau cu siguranță și a doua centură. Toți sunt pregătiți, dar eu m-am pregătit mult mai mult și sigur că o să obțin victorie. <laughs> Aștept toți pe 30 marți să vii, să ne stii. Stanislav And now, ladies and gentlemen, calling his opponent to the red corner. He's coming from Moldova. Make some noise for Test, he said, once again, I will prove myself and the victory will be mine. He wants to add another trophy to his collection and walk out of this tournament, not only the KOK featherweight champion, but in addition, the very first ever FIA 
featherweight champion of the world. Look at all the love and support that this crowd has for Renita. Love, support, and respect. And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the blue corner, age of 29, weighing 65 kilogram, height 1.69 meters, having a personal record of 46 fights, 43 wins, and just three losses. Personal coach, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Cibrian Sora. Ladies and gentlemen, he's fighting for Romania. Make some noise for Christian Speco. And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the red corner, age at 26, weighing 65 kilogram, height 1.66 meters, having a personal record of 21 fights, 15 wins and 6 losses. He's fighting for Thai stars. Make some noise for Moldova to Stanislav Renita. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is the first Semi-final on the 65 kilogram, three minutes, three round, extra one round, K1 rules. Thank you very much. No clinching, no elbow. Shake your hands if you want to. First semi-final matchup here in the VIA Featherweight World Grand Prix. Spetko versus Renita. First round. Fight. Round one. Of course, we can't get too ahead of ourselves, but everybody knows it, that potentially lurking in the future later tonight in the, the final matchup of the second part of tonight's event, we could potentially see a fifth matchup or uh, even a sixth one, actually, at this point, between Ronita and Sirbu, but that's a huge if, because there are no promises that Ronita's gonna get past Spetku. As I said, he's the oldest, most experienced fighter in this tournament, and uh, he's only lost three times in 46 fights, so that's not very often. This matchup could be the top featherweights from Romania and Moldova in the ring right now. Hats off to the matchmakers here and FIA president Doran Dammer for putting this one together. And for the fighters to agree to it. Whoa! Ranita goes upstairs with a kick and a little uppercut on the inside. And I thought I saw the head of Svetku get rocked back just a little bit there. Here we go. This one already turning out to be a barn burner. Nice right hand there by Spetku. These two were supposed to fight. There, there was rumors and rumblings of a fight between these two some time ago, but it never really came to fruition. I'm glad we're seeing it now, and it makes it even more important that the title is on the line for the winner of this World Grand Prix. Not for this fight, but whoever wins this one will stop, advance stop to the finals. Okay. Fight. And face the winner of the next contest, which will either be Francesco Pica or Dimitri Sirbu. Spetku's one of these guys who's just not gonna run out of gas. He's so quick, so lightning quick. And he's just like the Energizer Bunny. He just keeps going and going. Right hand, though, right down the middle might change his team. Look at these two. Really laying into each other. Now, 
Neither one of these guys is really known for being a huge knockout artist. They're volume punchers. They'll wear you down. Oh, and a left hand. Left hook lands from Svetka. These two are volume punchers, and they'll definitely take a toll on one or the other. What I'm really looking forward to is which one's going to crack first. Who's going to get a noticeable advantage on the other? Oh! What an action-packed round one that was. Wow. Non-stop action in round number one here between Svetku and Ronita. Well, when you think about it, these guys better be in good shape. For sure they can do three rounds, and we've seen them before go five rounds. They're both world champions. They've both been in five-round fights. They've both participated in tournaments before. So this is nothing new for them. They know how to prepare for these kinds of situations, and they know what they're getting themselves into. Second round. Fight. And with the, with the kind of fighters that these two are, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if these two go all the way to the closing bell. But Ronita turning it on in round two here. Good combo by Ronita. Well, it's certainly a, cl a cliche, and I would hate to be a judge in this one because there's just so many strikes to take into account. See a nice red welt on the right side of the body, to the far side of your screen now of Renita. Ooh, wait, wait a minute. Nita just really bit down on his gum shield there when he felt that low blow. You all right? <laughs> First coach. Time. Oh, he might be seeing Fight. Soprano in the shower later on. And he's not inside the ring. Fighting for the gold. Renita is a police officer here in Kishino. Stop, These two stop. laying into each other again. Fight. Back and forth they go. It's impossible as a commentator here to sit there and, and commentate on everything stop. that we're seeing. Oh my! Literally just knocked the taste right out of his mouth. But the action is so quick. All of the Punches and kicks come so fast and so furiously. A pardon the pun. That it's impossible to keep up with the action. Jumping knee attempted there from the bad boy. Polo coming back now. Big left hook rocks Renita. Oh my! Look at these two go at it now. Really digging into each other. Short little uppercut. Bounced off the forehead of Renita. And a knee may have found the mark. You can see some reddening on the face, all over the face there, especially on the left side of the face of Spetku. Wow, that was a sneaky little uppercut there. Look at how quick the reflexes of both these guys are. Not only can these guys throw at a very quick pace and an incredibly high output, but they also have the reflexes and the wherewithal to be able to counter their opponents and be almost able to see it coming before they do it. Which is nothing short of miraculous. Well, Spetku ducked his head just a little bit when he was throwing a shot. He almost got kicked right in the face for it. bounces off the gloves. That's another thing to take into account, too. How many of these shots are landing cleanly? A lot of them are. This is one of these fights where 
cumulative damage is certainly going to come into play here in round two. In the books, Ranita scored with a spinning back fist right on the bell. The second most important scoring criteria in FIA kickboxing is cumulative damage after only after knockdowns. There is certainly no shortage of cumulative damage in this one. Take another look. This is slow motion. Th that's almost like fast forwarding for a lot of fighters. Like you get a couple of big super heavyweights in there. That looks like you're watching it in fast forward. These, that's slow motion. Third round, fight. Round three. Back fight to action round. here. This is the third round. This is a World Grand Prix fight, so it is the possibility of an extra round should we need one. We've seen that before in these World Grand Prix matchups. We will have a fourth round if it is necessary. But nonetheless, we must have a winner. So one of these guys must come out. Oh, and that one crossed the eyes there of Renita. Bethku now clobbers him with another right hand. Tries to uncork a knee, and it was just a few centimeters out of range. Oh, ho, ho! Renita now returns the favor. And again, back and forth it goes. You saw Spetku land a big shot, and then you saw Renita land a big shot. These two are so evenly mashed up. Well, I agree with via President Doran Damier. It's just too close to call. All four guys, it's too close to call. Inside low kick from the bad boy. Half the time expired already in this third and final, or is it, round. We have the potential for a fourth round, and we must have a winner here. Somebody must advance to the finals to face either Francesco Pica or Dmitry Sirve. Jumping the by the current KOK champion. Look at Spetka! Backs him up. Whoa! Digging uppercut. And another one. Jumping knee now. Spetka all over him now. Stop. Stop back. Fight. Spetko turning it up now in round three. Inside low kick again. Lands from the champion. Spetko looks like he's bleeding now out of the right into the eyebrow area. And out comes the mouth guard again of the Romanian. Looking over to the corner for some advice as they put back in the mouth guard of Spetku now inside 30 seconds here. Spetku's really stepping on the gas here in round three. He is bleeding there from the corner of his left eye. I'm surprised they didn't get that cleaned up as they were doing the mouth guard. And these two going right at it now. Tooth and nail in the first semifinal matchup of the FIA World Grand Prix. Oh my! Oh. End of three rounds. Will we have a clear winner? I think it could be a split decision if we do. Who knows? Man, I'm not even going to wager a guess here. That is just too close to call for me. However, I will say that I think that Spetku really got the better of Renita, at least in that third round. He really stepped on the gas, but on the other hand, Renita opened him up. It might have been with that right hand right there. He 
really cleaned his clock with that shot. Oh! Well, now that I think about it, Ranita also, just looking from these replays in here, certainly got his licks in as well. Wow, this replay here really just shows exactly how ferocious that third round was. Let's find out who's it going to be, folks. Ranita or Spetko. Somebody is going to the finals. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is, by unanimous decision, for the red corner, Stanislav Renisa! Petko doesn't like it and does not agree with it, but he's going to have to learn to live with it. Stanislav Renisa advances to the finals and is one step closer to becoming a two-time champion here at FIA. Il torneo spero di vincerlo io, in finale con Sadi di Slavrenita e niente, vorrei fare un bel cappo al primo incontro e vincere bene bene il secondo incontro. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the second fight of the evening, this is the second semi-final on the 65 kilogram, three minute, three round, extra one round, K1 rules. Introducing first to the blue corner, he's coming from Italy, make some noise for Francesco Pica! Well, whomever Renita ends up facing in the finals. It's going to be one of these two guys. He's fought both of them before. So as Renita slowly makes his way back to the dressing room here, he's got that to think about. He's either going to have a rematch with Pika, his second fight with him, or he's going to have a rematch with Sirbu, the sixth fight between these two. So this is just an amazing situation we've got on our hands right now, folks. Francesco Pika. 22 years old, he is the youngest fighter in the tournament and has a fantastic record of 16 and 2. 16 and 2. One of those two losses came at the hands of Stanislav Ronita. He has never fought Dimitri Sirbu before though. Sirbu is the yin to Ronita's yang. And he's gonna have his hands full with the Malt Open tonight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing his opponent. I hope that it will be a revenge with Stanislav. It will be a revenge for the two Moldovians. And you can already see what it will be. Dimitri Serbo! And now, ladies and gentlemen, to the red corner, make some noise of Paul Moldovato, Dimitri Serbo! The Moldovan McGregor, 
Dimitri Sirva, longtime fighter here in FIA. He's 8 4 as a professional. The least experienced of all of the fighters has a fantastic Muay Thai background. When he wants to be, he can be fast, he can be aggressive. At other times, he can be very cool, very calm, and very technical. We've seen him fight on a number of occasions, and he's come very, very close to reaching the pinnacle of the featherweight division in FIA and in King of Kings, but has always come up just a little bit short. Could tonight, finally, finally, for Dimitri Sirbu, be that career-defining moment that he's been working for his whole life. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the blue corner, age 22, weighing 65 kilograms, height 1.68 meters, having a personal record of 18 fights, 16 wins, and two losses. He's fighting for Invictus Team. Make some noise from Italy to Francesco Pica! And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the red corner. Age at 28, weighing 65 kilograms, height 1.70 meters, having a personal record of 12 fights, 8 wins, and 4 losses. He's fighting for champion Taijim. Make some noise for Moldova to Dimitri Serbo! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second semi final fight on the 65 kilogram, 3 minute, 3 round, extra 1 round, K1 rose. Referee in the ring, Suhan Yulian. Gentlemen, you are fighting fair rules, obey my command all the time. No clinching, no elbow. Shake your hands if you want to. Judge. Take Judge. a look at the tail Judge. of the tape. Once again, between these two, Sirbu. Obviously older by six years, taller by two First centimeters, Fight. and less experienced. Round one. He's got about half the professional experience as Pika does. The Italian starting off quick, starting off fast. Pika's the kind of fighter that's going to use a lot of movement. He's always in constant motion, and he's got the stamina to keep it up for three rounds. Of course, it could be a different story if he makes it to the finals. Is he still going to have the stamina to keep up that kind of a style should he advance to the finals against Renita? That remains to be seen. Sirbu in the red and black from Moldova here. Mixing it up now with the Italian. Man, it, it is his story that uh, he's always close but no cigar. Whenever he fights, Renita seems to come out on the losing ends of things. Their uh, rivalry now stands at one in three in favor of Renita. I may have misspoke earlier on when I said they fought six times. They fought four times before in the past. If they meet tonight, it'll be their fifth encounter in the ring. Hard to keep track. They fought so many times, but five times between two fighters, that's got to be a record here in Pia. Nonetheless, Sirbu lost to Renita, but then got entered into a, a featherweight tournament one year ago and won the thing, and then earned himself a title shot and a rematch against Renita which he lost in Stop. December Stop. of last year, in 2018. First no holding. Nonetheless, First he's still no a number holding. one contender in the featherweight Fight. division, so he's been entered into this tournament again. This one for the FIA championship, not for the KOK title. Here we go! If he can win this matchup, he'll get one more crack at Renita. And how sweet would it be Break. for Sirbu? If he could not only win this matchup, get to the finals, but also finally beat his arch rival, Renita, 
and win that championship he has craved so much in his career. Whoa, look at that Superman punch. Just cleaned his clock. Well, oh, this one turning into a brawl here. Gentlemen, no holding. I don't think that uh, Sirbu have any problem with that. He's used to fighting under Thai rules. Goes downstairs to the left. Good action-packed first round, just like we saw in the previous semifinal matchup. Well, I hope all four of these guys have trained hard because they are going to need every ounce of energy that they have got in their will. Sirabu seemed like he wanted to cut down the ring and corner this guy, Pika, who, as I said, likes to utilize a lot of side-to-side -side movement. He likes to use every inch of that ring, and he stays in constant motion. Sirbu is trying to stop that. He's trying to put a stop to that real quick. Corner this guy, cut down the ring, and then do the damage. Take a look at this crowd, folks. Jam-packed full for this double World Grand Prix event here Round at FIA two. Volume 28. My name is Daniel Austin. Thank you for tuning in. Whoa! Pika again. He, he caught him with a, a left hand, but at the same time, God, look at that. Zerbu just dug right down deep with a low hook to the body while uh, Pika was complaining to the referee. It's protect yourself at all times. Even if you're complaining, you still have to protect yourself. And there he goes again. Look at the way he's bouncing back and forth like that. Always likes to stay in. Whoa, that was a tricky little shot there as he tried to push his head back and then sweep the leg. Certainly won't get any points for that under these rules here in FIA. But it could be effective. You can trip up your opponent and send them crashing down to the canvas. It will do some damage. Now look at the right eye. He either got kicked or kneed in that right eye. You can see the blood just starting to trickle out now. That's under the eye, so it's not going to be a fight-stopping injury, but it will swell up massively, I have a feeling. And when you're in a tournament kind of situation like that, it could really have an effect not only later in this fight, but should he make it to the finals in that one. Good combination. Look at this now. Pika likes it. Pika says, bring it on. Well, I don't think the Moldovan McGregor have any qualms about that. He'll be more than willing to unload on him again. Oh, Pika caught him good on the chin that time. Right in the beard. Oh, my. Big shots going in from both fighters and a clubbing right hand that time from Serbu. Stop, stop. Look at that. Three or four shots right in a row while he had the leg. Good Lord. Serbu measuring him now, really picking his spots. This is a different kind of a fight than we saw in our first semifinal matchup where they were just going toe to toe the whole time. These two are really picking big shots. Look at this fancy pants maneuver here by Francisco Pica. There's that left again by McGregor. As the blood continues to collect around the cut. Oh my! They really caught each other as they came into close quarters. Referee doesn't want him throwing him around. Pika now picking it up. Oh, he's going to give it right back to him. Listen, my command. Fight. Look at that combo. Stop. Sirbu is just throwing this kid around the ring. Fantastic round number two.
They can get a shot of that cut there is there. And to apply some pressure, put some Vaseline on there. Get the bleeding under control, get the swelling down. Oh, wow, that, that, that's that shot I was talking about. Now watch this now, he's complaining to the ref, and then Sirabu says, you know what? This fight's never been stopped, let's go. Man, that was a brutal round two. As I look at our Romanian commentary team, Ion and Valentin. Final round. Fight! Round three, final round. And once again, Pika coming out. That bouncy kind of a style. <laughs> you can see that the uh, Serbu is a little bit taller, and he's just got longer limbs, too. It looks like he's just got longer arms, longer legs. And he certainly is the taller fighter. It's, it, officially, it's just two centimeters taller. Overhand oh, right oh, by oh. Serbu. And again, he just what? throws him across the ring like yesterday's garbage. Oh boy, that overhand right of Serbu is trouble. Serbu again, proving that he wants to be the best, but in order to do that, he's gonna have to beat Renita. That's what he needs to do. And look at that tricky style right there. That's that Muay Thai style of Serbu coming into play. I'll tell you what though, Pika, has certainly shown that he's game. He's, he's game to sit in there and, and trade shots with Serbu. Oh, and he clocked him with a left. Big knee goes in from Serbu. Serbu said before the matchup, on Saturday, we will see a rematch with me and Renita in the finals, and I will not miss this chance. Well, he's certainly making a couple of bold statements. Number one, that Renita's going to win his fight, and that number two, he's going to win his. Let's see if it comes true here. One minute remaining in this third and final round. Stop, 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 stop. Down they go again. Boy, stop this back. one is all over the place. Last motion. Wait a minute now. Listen my command. No action and stop. Next time I'll give you all time. Time. Referee Fight. Julian Suhan laying down the law here. Oh, look at those two. Big shots going in now. These two are really swinging hard here. You can see again that certainly they have worn down a little bit over the course of these three rounds, but there's still game for more. Left hand goes in from the Moldovan McGregor. Pika says, come on, let's do it. But he doesn't seem to be bringing it offensively here as much as he was in rounds two and three. Ramez spoke too soon. Here comes the Italian. Misses wildly with the right hand. Wow. An explosion of violence to end round three. Are we going to see another fight between Dimitri Sirbo and Stanislav Bernita in the finals? A fifth fight between these two. Or will we see a second fight between Francesco Pica and Bernita? Referee Mike Diamond still outside the ring collecting the original scores. Send it up to ringside. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the winner is for the red corner for Dimitri Servo. Dimitri Servo is going to be the finalist 
for the 65 kilogram we belt. We are going to see. see. We already got two contenders for that Between belt. Ronita and oh, Turbo. Mia's greatest rivalry continues in the finals of the Mia Featherweight World Grand Prix later tonight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the next fight of the evening, this is a super fight on the 77 kilogram. Introducing first to the blue corner, he's coming from Moldova. Make some noise out for Ion Ureke. We now know who our two finalists are going to be the featherweight tournament we shall return to that situation later in the final matchup of our first world grand prix but for now we go to 75 kilos eon ureke of moldova set to take on outdoor Rumza, also of moldova well, i'll tell you what if i am eon ureke i'm hungrier than i was before I'm more aggressive than I was before. I, I, I'm going to be more angry than I was before. I'm going to be more. I'm going to be more everything than I was before because he is in his second professional fight, and his first one was a loss. He needs to prove it to himself, to his coach, to his fans that he's got what it takes to beat somebody in the world of pro kickboxing. He has got to get his hand raised here tonight and get a victory. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing his own into the red corner. He's coming from Moldova. Please welcome to Artur Brunza. Look at this fantastic crowd on hand here. This place sold out as it is each and every time. I don't know how they do it but they pack this place full of fans each and every time. And I guarantee those only empty seats there are people who are going to have their picture taken with Sirbu right now, as they traditionally do after the fights are over. Ion Ureke set to take on this man, Artur Brunza. Brunza one and one is the 22 year old. 180 centimeters tall, that is centimeters taller than his opponent. It represents Veracruz Fight Club here in Moldova. now of Brunza. She feels paused here at the side and just kind of mentally preparing herself. Now he's ready. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Presenting the blue corner, age of 26, weighing 77 kilogram, height 1.78 meters, having a personal record of one fight and one loss. He is fighting for Thai boxing. Make some noise from Moldova to Ion Hurekin. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the red corner, age at 22, weighing 77 kilogram, height 1.80 meters, having a personal record of two fights, one wins and one loss, his fight for Berkut Fight Club. Make some noise from Moldova to Artur 
Branza. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a super fight on the 77 kilogram per minute three round, extra one round, K1 Rose. Referee in the ring, Lobuchar Dumitro. Spinning back fist right off the bat. The first shot out of the gate that time by Ureke. Well, they struck each other simultaneously there. Lots of smoke and mirrors early on by Ureke. Ureke looks to be, he's shorter, but he's kind of stockier. And he, he looks to be a little bit thicker around the chest Stop. area, but Stop. certainly Brunza looks to be in fantastic shape himself. Judge. Fight. The definition on the shoulders and the biceps of Brunza. How quick he twitched his body there. How a grazing blow on the chin. Downstairs again now for the second time goes Ureke. Cracking low kick there. Sound. Bouncing off of every wall here in the Minaj Arena. Just narrowly out of range once again. That time he went downstairs. That was way downstairs. That was almost in the nether regions. Good combination. Downstairs with the right, upstairs with the left. Ureke is throwing with conviction. Loving left hand there. Spinning back fist that time, caught him with the, the lower portion of the glove, maybe even a forearm, and he split him open with it too. Blood now, pouring out of the right side of the face. So he is really bleeding profusely from the temple area. He is a bloody mess in there. Stop. Stop. That spinning back Stop. fist that opened Stop. him up. Stop time, stop time. Oh, he's gonna get cleaned up here. Let's. Have a look at that. No, it's not in the temple. It's right in the corner of the eyebrow. In the, the, right, the right eyebrow, right on the far corner. And it's a big gash. It's a big, nasty gash. Emergency technicians coming in here, put a little bit of pressure on that thing. Maybe relieve the, oh, there you can see it there. Look at that way he's opened up. That's... That's a, a wound. That's a battle wound there, folks. That's going to need a few stitches by the end of the night. Wait a minute. Is he shaking his head? No, he doesn't. Well, there are a whole lot of hullabaloo over here in the corner. It looks to be very concerned, does the ringside physician. The bleeding has stopped. Apparently, or has it? I can see some more blood now collecting in there. There's a big glob of something. Time. And we're back to business. Fight. Crowd happy that this fight will continue. Oh, and he goes right back to work now. Forget about the cut. He's going to try to even the odds here. Hard into the ropes now. Fight. He just cleaned his clock right in the same spot. The same spot where the cut was. In the emergency medical team now rushing to the aid of Ion Ureke. Wow! That was a quick and violent fight, folks. 
right where they went back to action. They picked up right where they left. Look at the way he smashed his head on the way down on the canvas. Watch this. Boom! Bang! It's like being bounced around in a pinball machine. And he was stumbling and bumbling when he made it back up to his feet. And referee Dimitri Lupishor just called off the bout. Watch his face on the canvas. Crack. Ooh. That's a debt. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is by knockout in the first round for the red corner, Arthur Brenza. Wow, what a matchup that was. Just a whirlwind of destruction at 75 kilos. Arthur Brunza, victorious with an exclamation point at the end of this contest. For the next fight of the evening, this is a super fight on the 75 kilogram. Three minute, three round, extra one round, K1 Rose. Into the same first to the blue corner. It's coming from Russia. Make some noise for Doka Gurmael. We are about halfway through the evening here tonight. We approach the midway point the second portion of our show and our first World Grand Prix. We go to 75 kilos, Doka Gurmayev of Russia. Representing the, uh, well, representing Russia originally from the Chechnya. Bruce Jim is the 24 year old from I, I believe he now resides in Moscow. So he's traveled a lot. A little bit east of the border. And he's a late replacement for another fighter. But has assured everybody that he's ready for action at FIA Volume 28. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call this opening to the red corner. He's coming from Moldova. Please welcome to Mina Manoli. Holy Manoli! Mina Manoli back in action here at FIA Kickboxing. I'll tell you what, man, this kid is exciting. He has got K.O. power written all over him. Holy Manoli, 4 and 0 oh. in his career, seems to be unstoppable at this point. He is riding a wave of momentum that we have not seen for quite some time. It's via kickboxing. He makes the long walk down his, the aisle filled with his supporters and his fans. Looks to continue the path of destruction that he has already started and looking for the next KO victim. And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the blue corner. 
age 24, weighing 75 kilograms, height 1.78 meters, having a personal record of five fights, three wins, and two losses. He's fighting for Rus Jim. Please, from Russia, make some noise at all. Doka Gurmaev. And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the red corner, age 21, weighing 75 kilograms, height 1.77 meters, having a personal record of four fights, four wins, and never lost. He's fighting for champion. Make some noise from Moldova at all. Mino Manoli. This is a super fight on the 75 kilogram, three minute, three round, extra one round, K1 rules. Referee in the ring, Lupusor, do it through. Fighters, you're a fighter. You're a fighter with clear rules. I want to clear fight, no clinching, no elbow. Good luck. Good luck. Judge, judge, judge. Both guys getting right up in the First grill time. of each other here. Getting another look at their opponent before this fight. one goes on. But let me tell you what, folks, one. keep your eye on this one. The results may be messy. Cracking low kick there by Manoli. Goes upstairs too with lightning quick speed. Manoli now! Up, really up. opening up! Not it wasting any time Manoli. in this contest. Gudemayev had better be ready for a war. This is my first time seeing Gudemayev in action. Up. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can bring here because he is up against one of the brightest prospects in FIA kickboxing. Oh my, but no Bump. one Bump. He may have caught a low Bump. shot. Boy, did he send a look towards Gurmeyev after that low blow. Fight. And it was a derogatory one. that kick able to generate such power and again he's he really puts an extra couple of punches or two doesn't he on the end of those combinations stop, stop. not just going in there and throwing one shot he's throwing just three awesome. four five no, six shot combinations and they're right. all with blistering speed and power well Grimayev got a good shot in there brings the head kick up there that lands on the gloves both these guys have thrown some very dangerous shots. They've all been blocked so far, though. Nobody's really landed that big head shot yet, but when it does land, look out. One minute remaining now in round one. These are the kind of fights that will shorten your career. I'll tell you what, you put two guys in the ring like this, and somebody, I mean, something's got to break sooner or later. You can't keep going at it like this. So hard for three full rounds, or can they? We shall see. Hard up, kick that up. time. He caught the leg, but boy, did he eat it right under the arm, into the rib cage. A lot of times people look at that and they say, well, yeah, he blocked it because he, he grabbed the leg. Not the case. He ate that kick hard. Gurmayev wants him to bring it. He will. Let's fly a big left kick that time. Did the Chechnya. Good low kick as well. Lands on the outside of the thigh of Manoli. That time he released the leg. Stop. Time. End of round one. I can almost feel like a collective sigh of relief from this crowd, like, whoa, that was intense. Let's take a look at round one highlights. Well, basically the whole round was a highlight. Look at that. How many shots was that? Five, six, seven, it might have been 10 punches in there from Holy Manoli.
Well, let's see what these guys got left. I'll tell you what, they really went to war in round number one. Second round. Round two underway. Mina Manoli in the red. And Dolka Gurmeyev in the camo. 75 kilograms is the weight limit. Big push kick backs up Manoli and a low kick's being exchanged. Looks like two big knockout artists there. And a you can feel the breeze here at ringside off of that kick, literally. Left jab scores. Manoli comes back with three shots. Stop. No bleaching. Fight. Keep in mind, folks. Stop. Still got a couple more fights. We have this one. And, an, and another couple fights, and then we've got the finals of the Featherweight World Grand Prix. Stanislav Vernita and Dmitry Sirbu for the fifth time in their careers. It is now three to one in that rivalry in favor of Vernita. Will history repeat itself, or will Sirbu finally get the big win he's been looking for? Oh my! A crushing right hand! And Manoli has been brought to his Five. knees! Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Oh, and he's split open. He is split open. Five. Good. Right in the corner of the left eye. Here Five. we go! Gomea going right after him now. Manoli is shaken. He is really shaken. Five. Manoli looks wobbly here. And now there's blood coming out of the nose of Gurmeya. What a war we're seeing here in round two. Oh. Oh. Manoli, has he recovered or not? Stop. He was really wobbled there in round two. Usually Stop. it's the other way around. It's Manoli knocking his opponents out. But for the first time in his career, he is in some serious trouble now. See how he deals with this kind of situation. Not one that he's been in before. I am now going to work with knees on the inside. And Manoli giving him a taste of his own medicine as well. Now the Russian corner really urging their man on to go in, go on the attack, keep up his pursuit. Manoli just kind of hanging out here, trying to wait out the clock. Stop. Oh, Manoli's Stop. eye is busted bad. I told you, folks. I told you that something would have to give sooner or later. When you got two big knockout artists in there like that. Oh, a crushing shot. Just wobbled the legs. His legs just gave right out on him. Caught it right in the temple. Right in the side of the head. Look at Manoli. He looks a little bit spaced out, doesn't he? The way he's kind of blinking his eyes. He's nodding his head at his coach. That doesn't mean that he understands it. Or that he'll even remember it. But at least he's got something going on upstairs. Third and final round coming up. This one is not over yet. Fight. Touch of gloves and we're back to war. Manoli trying to keep him at bay. Extending the legs. Crushing body kick there. That is like being smashed with a baseball bat. Germeyev oh. wants a war and he's going to get it. Ooh. Manoli does not like those shots upstairs. Not at all. You can see that he's 
uh, more weary than he was. Up. Usually he's a guy that just throws caution to the wind. Fight. Not anymore. This is the biggest test of Manoli's career. Up. Could be down on the right. scorecards at this point now, especially after that knockdown. So he needs a big round three to get his hand raised. Otherwise, Gurmeyev is going to make a huge, huge Up. statement right. Right. in via kickboxing. Right. Gurmeyev now bleeding from the eye. He was bleeding from the nose Up. earlier. And now, or either that or it's Manoli. Right. No, there's no blood coming from Manoli. That's got to be his. Wild swing there from Manoli. Stop. And a little right. knee on the inside. Right. You can see that this kind of a this kind of a fight is taking a toll on these two. They're both feeling the repercussions. Back and forth they go with low kicks. Oh, and there's that overhand right again from Gurmayev. He snuck it right in there. It wasn't as vicious as the, the one that knocked him down, but it was still right in that same spot. Manoli lands a good shot. Now, their heads may have actually clashed right there. Manoli misses with a kick. He's still generating some power, but not as much as in the early portions of the fight. 50 seconds on the clock, third and final round. Boy, this has been a bloody battle between these two. Look at the way they're swinging in there. Something's got to give. Oh, and a big knee there from the Russian. They fall into the corner now. Blood now coming out of the right eye of Gurmeya. Stop. Push kick by Manoli. Time slipping Stop. away in this one. Ten second hammer goes down. This one has been an absolute slugfest from start to finish. What a fight! Take a look at round three highlights here. Manoli seems to have recovered quite a bit after that knockdown in round two. And he, he did well in round three, but I don't think it was enough to win the fight. I, I think Gurmeyev's the winner here. But we will make it official with our ring announcer, Mike Diamonds, once he steps into the ring. But I'll tell you what, folks, you want hard hitting, Balls to the wall action. You just got it. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is a by unanimous decision from the blue corner. Funda Archive. Mina Holy Manoli suffers his first defeat in his career, and Dolka Gurmaya, perhaps a new star is born in via kickboxing. Ladies and gentlemen, Duma Gormaev was the winner of this fight. Funda Alkayış Türkiye'den geliyorum. Rakibimin çok iyi olduğunu biliyorum ama şunu bilmeli ki ben de bir şampiyonum ve buraya kaybetmeye gelmedim. Umarım gecenin sonunda kazanan ben olacağım.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna be a woman supervised. Introducing first to the blue corner, she's coming from Turkey. Make some noise. Welcome to Funda Alkayes. This is one of the fights I was really looking forward to in the second part of the World Grand Prix, the second of three parts here today. Women's action in the 48 kilogram weight division. Funda al Kayish of Turkey set to take on Nadezhda Kantir. Funda is an extremely talented fighter from Turkey. And not only is she an extremely talented fighter, but also took part in Survivor, the reality show in her home country. And she is just a massive superstar now in Turkey. She's also in a Nike commercial. So she's a really big superstar in Turkey. Looking to continue that momentum, all of the success she's had in her career up to this point. And if she can beat Kantir, which almost nobody has been able to do, she would certainly make her mark in Moldova. Now, ladies and gentlemen, calling his opponent to the red corner. Am muncit foarte mult ca să ajung aici. Cei care sunt mai buni trebuie să demonstreze aici la noi acasă. Eu sunt cea mai bună, am muncit foarte mult pentru asta. Moldovenii știu să lupte foarte bine și veniți și ne susțineți. Nadejda Kantir! There she is, the current and reigning KOK strawweight champion of the world at 52 kilos. But for the past several events, she's been competing at 48 kilos. I think she feels more comfortable down uh, a low fighter. She's 27 years old and has only had one defeat in her nine professional fights. And that was to the fight queen, Esma Hassan. Next to Hassan, I think that al Kaish is her toughest battle yet. Today is going to be a huge, huge moment, either for better or for worse, in the career of the Dej de Kantir. I really hand it to the matchmakers here at FIA. They do not give their, their top fighters, their star fighters, easy fights, especially here tonight. The Dej de Kantir thrives on being someone to look up to. She thrives on being an example of being a, a mentor to younger fighters. And she is really showing some personality in her hometown right now. She says that she's been waiting for this fight for a long, long time. And she will win at all costs. She can be very technical or she can be very aggressive. It just depends on the opponent. Which the Dejda can do are we going to see at FIA Volume 28 right now? And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the blue corner, Asian 30, weighing 48 kilogram, height 1.63 meters, having a personal record of 45, 35 wins and 5 losses. She's fighting for al Qais Chim. Please, from Turkey, make some noise for Funda al -Kayish. And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the red corner. Age 27, weighing 48 kilogram, height 1.66 meters, having a personal record of 9 fights, 8 wins, and 1 loss. She's fighting for Belkut Fight Club. Make some noise from Moldova to Nadezhda Kantir! Ladies and gentlemen, this is a woman super fight under 48 kilogram, three minute, three round, extra one round, K1 rules. Referee in the ring, Lupusar Dumitru. 
Akai is just sprinting the center ring here. As Kantir almost refusing to make eye contact and a good show of sportsmanship. Judge, judge, judge. But it really seems to me like Funda Alkaish has, has dropped a lot of weight to be able to make the limit of 48 Stop. kilos. Stop. Listen, Kantir listen. caught her with the no left hand. No Fight. She looks very thin. Does the Turk. Well, it may have been a momentary clash of heads here, and it looks like this one is going to be high volume, high output. As I said, we, we've seen some fights where Kantir, wow, look at the boxing, look at the hands of the Moldovan. She goes down with the right and up with the left. Striking downstairs, right in the kidney area of the Turk. As I said, Akaish has fought around the world. She has a, a kickboxing, Muay Thai, and Wushu background. So very well-rounded, striking education for the Turkish fighter, who has had a, a couple of fights in glory. Nadezhda Kantir, on the other hand, has exclusively fought professionally here in Moldova. And that, that's one thing I would like to see from the Dejda Kantir uh, in, in the very near future is for her to get out there, get out there in the world, visit different countries, fight other fighters. You, know, you can't fight at home your whole career. If you really want to make your mark as a fighter, you've got to be able to get out there in the world, fight the best, and make your mark abroad. But the good part about fighting at home is she has really developed a huge fan following here. She, and she's a, a good mentor, a good teacher, a, a good example for a lot of other up and coming fighters in Moldova. And do make sure you check us out online, fia.md. Click on the shop link. All kinds of great FIA merchandise available online. I just actually got myself today a couple of FIA t-shirts that I'm going to be sporting. And a FIA cap as well. Well, this fight has uh, changed since the opening bell. We saw a war the opening 30 seconds or so. And here in the closing 30 seconds, quite a different kind of a fight. As I said, Kantir can fight very hard and very aggressively. She can get right in your face and just throw non-stop punches and bunches. Uh, or she can fight going backwards, very technical, keeping the distance. Just depends on the opponent. Stop! Stop! Fight! Stop! End of round one. Let's take a look at some round one highlights here between these two ladies. Well, things really, look at those two clubbing left hands right in the eye. You can see that there, there was some swelling. I saw some swelling when she was in the corner there on that eye. But uh, at times, that opening round was just back and forth, nonstop action. At other times, much slower pace. So. Never know what you're going to get in this one. Second round. Second round. Back to business. Round two here. And this 48. Kilogram weight limit ladies matchup here at FIA Kickboxing. I haven't looked forward to a women's match as much as I have since Esma Hassas exited the promotion. And who knows if she'll be back or not. That was a great rivalry between her and Kantir. And I still think there's room for another fight between those two. 
Should Haas Haas return? But for now, wow, is this a great one on paper. And it's turned out to be quite an interesting one as things unfold. Look at this now, Kanter really opening up. That must have been at least 10 shots there on that combo. I think that Nadezhda Kanter has really been focusing on her hands. You can see she's really, the way she's standing, the way she's holding her hands, the way she's defending herself and the combinations that she's throwing tells me that she's really been focusing a lot on her boxing. The way she gets down low and throws those power punches. Seems to me like Alkayish, on the other hand, though, really has a strong Thai background. And you can see she incorporates elements of that wushu as well, some martial arts aspects too. So it's a, it's a styles game in there. See the Kantir does have uh, just a little bit of trouble getting inside at times. She does have a three centimeter height disadvantage. And I think that Alkayash wants to kind of stay on the outside, oh. use those push kicks, Ready. use her legs. Inside low kick, that one was quite low on the upper portion of her thigh. Stop. Alkayash and Kantir do have a common opponent. It was Daria Puntus. Both ladies were successful against her, but we saw Daria on previous editions of via kickboxing. Two rounds down and one to go here. Take another look at round two. Both ladies look to be in great condition for this one. Well, I was wondering if we were gonna see a technical kind of a battle or a slugfest. Like I said, at different times in the fight, it's been both. Sometimes they're they're playing a cat and mouse game in there with Kantir trying to get inside, trying to drop those heavy punches, those 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 long combinations, and other times Alkayesh able to control the action from a distance with her body kicks, with her low kicks. Oh, and she tagged Kantir with a right hand, cracking kick to the body now by the Turk. Oh, and she's starting to build some momentum here. And Kantir almost went for a double leg takedown. Nice low kick. Alkayesh really working well now from a distance. You see the legs of Nadezhda Kantir all red now. Look at the legs inside and out. Referees had just about enough of the clinching too. I think he's right on the border here whipping out his... Yellow Stop. card. Listen, my no clinching. Stop. Now, Listen. wait a minute now. Referee didn't even Fight. restart the matchup here. There's a little preemptive. One minute gone by here in this third round. Good body kicks and knees going in once again from the Turk. There's that martial arts background I was saying. She's good at utilizing those kicks, and a lot of times that'll throw somebody for a loop. You don't expect kicks like that in a traditional kickboxing kind of a matchup, but when you've got somebody with that wushu background, 
Sometimes it happens, half the time gone by now. Cantor blocking that shot downstairs. Look at the eyes, there's swelling, a lot of swelling around the left eye of the Turk. Both ladies really doing some damage. I think that the Cantier has done a lot of damage to the face with her extended combos. And uh, Akayash has really done a lot of work on the legs and the body. There's that combo again. I love when she goes downstairs into the kidney area with her right, and the left is right behind it upstairs. Stop. Hammering that one home. Certainly two different approaches to this fight and different styles. And now Cantor working the legs too. Stop. 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 Loving right hand there Stop. by the champ. I don't know how much longer that KOK is going to continue to recognize Nadezhna Kantir as the strawweight champion at 52 kilos. She doesn't even fight at 52 kilos anymore and hasn't for nearly a year. And she's Stop. never Stop. Uh, defended the championship. So Stop. the new rule in King of Kings is you have to defend it at least once a year. And if you don't, you're going to be stripped of the title. So if they can't arrange a fight for her soon, then she might kiss that title goodbye. Well, that's the end of the fight here. And we'll go back and take a look at round three action. Man, this is close. I, I don't know how the judges are going to score this one. Are they going to lean in favor of the local girl and her hands? Or are they going to see it in favor of the Turk and her kicks? Both ladies did a, a lot of damage. Cumulative damage is big under FIA scoring rules. It's the second most important thing under knockdowns. We certainly didn't see any of those. Go. Turkish fighter looks confident. Hoping, wishing, can't hear patience. Let's get the official word from Mike Diamonds. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is, by unanimous decision, for the red corner, not this young the Kantir has done it again, inarguably. The toughest fight of her career. She now moves to nine and one. Bunda Akayesh still coming to terms with that decision. We'll be right back. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the next fight of the evening, this is a super fight, a plus 93 kilogram. Introducing first, in the blue corner, he's coming from Serbia. Make some noise for Mihailo Tetovic. We now turn our attention to the heavyweight division. Mihailo Kejasovic of Serbia, 24 years old and almost two meters tall at 198 centimeters. Fights a lot in his home country 
of Serbia for the CFL promotion, the Collision Fight League. Before the fight, he said, we are the underdog on paper, but we're also more willing, stronger, and technically better. He thinks that Bolotov has great kicks and great legs, but he feels that his boxing is not going to hold up in this contest. And now, ladies and gentlemen, calling his opponent to the red corner, he's from Moldova, make some noise for Maxim Bolotov. It's in your eyes, a color fade out, looks like a new trend. It is the return of Maxim Bolotov. Last summer, in 2018, he suffered a tremendous knockout loss in Tatneft Cup in Russia. It was a brutal head kick KO, and since then we have not seen him in action in via kickboxing. But I'll tell you what, he was always one of the most dangerous heavyweights in Moldova. Is he still the same fighter? Sometimes when you get a, a, a big head kick knockout like that, it changes you. It changes you as a fighter. You almost become a, a little bit gun shy. So I'm interested to see now in what kind of a shape Maxim Bolotov is in coming into this. Are we going to see the old Maxim Bolotov? He was never entered into the FIA Heavyweight World Grand Prix. And I'm sure that he is just itching. He's just dying, chomping at the bit to get back into the ring and into the mix. Here in the heavyweight division, it claims the FIA Heavyweight Championship perhaps somewhere down the line, but he's gonna have to get the job done here tonight if he's gonna be able to do that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the blue corner, age 24, weighing 100 kilograms, height 1.90 meters, having a personal record of 22 fight, 15 wins, and 7 losses. He is fighting for kickboxing team Sidlini. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise from Serbia to Mihailo Getoic. Presenting the red corner, age 33, weighing 108 kilogram, height 1.88 meters, having a personal record of 22 fight, 15 wins and 5 losses. Ladies and gentlemen, is fighting for Thai Box Club, make some noise from Moldova to Maxim Bolotov! This is a super fight. Plus 93 kilogram and 3 minute 3 round X one round K1 rules. Referee in the ring, Susan Lulian. Gentlemen, we are fighting fair rules, so pay my command all time. No clinching, no one. Shake your hands if you want to. Go back. Judge, judge. Wait. You can see the difference. First Between these two guys, Fight. not only on paper, but when they're standing next to each other. Bolotov shorter, much thicker. Whereas the Serbian, wow! Did you just hear not only the slap, but the reaction from the crowd when he landed that low kick? Wow, what a statement that is to open the fight with. Bolotov looks, well, he. To me, he does look a little bit uncomfortable in there. He's really protecting his head. Well, he's swinging wildly, though, looking for that knockout. Oh, and down he goes again! Down goes Bolotov! He is on Dream Street! The eyes just rolled back in the head! Bolotov has just been destroyed in round one! I don't believe it! Maybe he did come back too early. Holy cow! A collective gasp in this audience. 
just went echoing throughout the arena when he caught that shot. I didn't even catch exactly what it was with a punch or a kick. It all happened so fast. But I, this is what I was worried about. I was talking about this before the fight. When you get a shot like that, like that knockout he got last summer, it sometimes it changes you as a fighter. Let's see if we can see how it happened. Uh, Bolotov maybe could sense that the end was near and was fighting with all he had. Ooh, oh my. That's a scary moment. And I'll tell you what, you can't take too many more knockouts like that. Watch the right hand. Boom. Right down the middle. You can see the eyes just roll back in his head, and he was out cold. Well. Now Pelotov looking up at the big screen here in the arena, watching it. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is by a knockout in the first round, the second 36 for the blue corner, Mihaila Kamaran. Well, I hate to say it, but. Uh... I think he's going to need some time off. I think that Boloko needs some time off to reassess where he's at right now uh, physically with his head. Uh, both, I mean, when I say with his head, I mean both mentally and physically because you can't have too many situations like that in your career. I wish him the best. It's been a pleasure calling his fights up until this point. But uh, he, he's got some soul searching to do. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first final of this evening on the 65 kilogram. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, in the ring is coming from Moldova. Make some noise for Dimitri Serbo. I kind of had a feeling, I think everybody kind of had that feeling that we were going to see this fight again. It's just unavoidable. Dimitri Serbo is just a thorn in the side of Stanislav Renita. No matter what Renita does, he cannot get rid of Dmitry Sirbu. But no matter what Dmitry Sirbu does, he cannot beat Stanislav Renita. So is history going to repeat itself again here? Is Renita going to teach Sirbu another lesson? Or is tonight, finally, in a very long time, Dimitri Sirbu's time to shine. This, everything, everything can be erased. All the losses to Renita in the past few years. And Sirbu can be completely redeemed if he can win right now. It'd be the first ever FIA featherweight champion of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call this opponent to the red corner. He's coming from Moldova. Please make some noise for Stanislav Renita. The fights of both of these gentlemen did go the distance. They went the full three rounds, and both of these guys won by decision. 
Ronita defeating Christian Spetku. And Dimitri Sirbu defeating Francesco Pica. That's what it's all about, folks. The richest prize in the featherweight division. The featherweight championship of FIA kickboxing. Renita is currently the KOK featherweight champion. He, he made a successful title defense against Dimitri Sirbu in December in the last FIA kickboxing event. And here we go again. Stanislav Renita makes that walk once again down that aisle and is going to take on his arch rival. Things are different this time, though. This is a tournament. This is not the same situation. These guys are not fresh, and anything's possible. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the 65 kilogram title bell. Boy, that is a beautiful belt. Tell you what, I was there before the show checking that thing out. Absolutely gorgeous. What a beautiful belt, full of gold My thoughts exactly. and diamonds. Holding by the most beautiful girl around here. Oh yeah. That's what it's all about. That's what these two are fighting for, but not only that. There is and pride now, at stake, and, and there is a long history between The moment has two. arrived. Presenting the blue corner, age 28, weighing 65 kilogram, height 1.70 meters, having a personal record of 13 wins, 8 wins, and 4 losses. He's fighting for champion Tai Jim. Make some noise from Moldovato, Dimitri Serbo! Presenting the red corner, age of 26, weighing 65 kilogram, height 1.66 meters, having a personal record of 20, 22 fights, 16 wins and 6 losses. He's fighting for Thai stars. He's coming from Rondova. Make some noise for Stanislav Renita. This is the final fight on the 65 kilogram per minute three round extra one round K1 Rose. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the reloaded referee in the ring, Suan Yulian. Fighters? There are no two fighters in FIA which know each other better. I remind you, we are fighting FIA rules. Obey my command all the time. No pinching, no. Shake your hands if you want to. Judge. Judge. There should be absolutely no surprises as far as these two fighters are concerned. First round. They know each Fight. other inside and out. A lot of it's going to depend, I think, on who is able to execute their game plan better and who's in better shape coming into this final. guys starting this fight off like we've seen them do so many times before they're cautious and it's, it's almost a, as if they're just long time sparring partners they're so evenly matched up the thing is though Renita just squeaks out the victory every time a lot of times it, it comes to a very close decision it goes it goes an extra round very often it, it, it's a split decision and Renita always seems to sneak out the victory. Serbu, if he's going to win here, he needs a definitive win, I think. I think he really needs a big, strong, definitive win here. The thing is, these guys know each other so well though, that they're not oftentimes willing to take a huge chance. Look at that right hand. This is a, a different ball game, though, as I said. This is, uh, they were obviously prepared for the chance that they may fight each other again. It's obviously not guaranteed in a four-man tournament, but it's, you know, who knows what kind of 
pain or what kind of injuries they're coming with into this one. That it was not an easy fight for either guy in the semifinals. But as we've seen before, both these guys do have the stamina. They could fight each other for hours, literally. I think that's what they should do. They should just throw out how many rounds we can have. That there shouldn't be a limit on the number of rounds we can have. We should just they, they should just fight until one of them just can't even stand up anymore. That's the only way you're going to get a clear winner. And once again, we see this chess match coming into play here. This is not the kind of fight that we saw in the semifinals between these two in both the fights. It was more of an action-packed, hard-hitting kind of a war. Serbu keeping the distance. Renita not in a hurry to close it. When he does come in, though, he's getting picked off by the Moldovan McGregor. Ten-second hammer goes down, and now they're both trying to steal the round here in the last couple of seconds because there hasn't been much action. End of round one. Who knows how many rounds it's been total between these two. See some marking on the face of the bad boy, especially on the right side of the face above the eyebrow. That's from the previous fight and whatever damage Sirbu has been able to do thus far. Well, how much longer are we going to see this? How much longer is this chess match going to play out in front of our eyes before things finally start to break down a little bit? I think with the implications of this matchup and the title at stake, they can't continue to play this game forever. I think there's going to come a point sooner or later, just my hypothesis here, that this thing's going to really catch on fire. Second round, fight. Round two action here in business. Starting to pick up a little bit here. Let's take a look at our Romanian commentary team. We've got Romanian and English going right now. And for the third part of the event, coming up next after this fight, our Russian commentary team will join us at ringside as well. You can feel a sense of urgency now, coming, especially coming from Ranita. He, he's the fighter at the height disadvantage, and he's, he's the one putting on the pressure here. So it's, it's in his hands here to kind of dictate the pace of this thing. I think it's Sirbu's strategy to stay away. And here we go. I told you that business was going to pick up, and it is. Oh, nice right hand by Renita. The best shot of the fight so far. Renita has got to prove that he's the champ, that he is still the king of the FIA featherweight division and the cream of the crop, and that he will maintain his dominance over Sirbu. Sirbu has got to prove that he's still got the wherewithal to beat Renita. He's been waiting for this win for years over Renita. He's never been able to pull it off. And how sweet would it be for Dimitri Sirbu to walk out of here not only with that much desired victory, but also the championship belt to boot. Getting back kick caught him in the arm. Looks like there's a little bit of blood coming from the mouth of Sirbu. And you can see things are starting to get a little bit more rough in there. These guys are clinching and holding each other and pressing each other's necks backwards with their forearms and grinding their gloves across each other's faces. It's really starting to get a lot more physical in there now. Oh, what an exchange that was. Everybody in this crowd leaning a little bit more forward in their chairs right now, right on the edge of their seats. 
Another nice exchange by both guys. Renita now! Renita! Catches it was a great combo. Renita's starting to come alive. This is what I want to see. I want to see these two really get into each other. We know they can do these long, drawn-out technical fights. I want to see a war. Who wants to be the champion? Come on! Who wants it more? Was that just the beginning of it? I certainly hope so. I want to see these two hammer each other until we have a clear, distinct winner. I don't want a split decision. I want to see somebody laying on the canvas and somebody standing tall. I want a clear, definitive winner here. Well, these two have been in the room with each other for so many rounds over the years. You know that they've got that respect for each other. They've got the sportsmanship. Nobody's going to do anything dirty, certainly, in this fight. They, they respect each other too much for that. But they will open up a can. Zerbu, again, trying to keep the distance, trying to stay just out of range of the bad boy. And Renita trying to get inside and trying to get dirty. Oh, nice right hand there by Renita. Who's going to win this game here? Third and final round here. The winner walks out with the strap. McGregor's got to pick it up too. The Moldova McGregor has really got to kick it into a higher gear right now. I don't think he can continue to stand at the distance and try to play this chess game. He's got he's to get just as dirty now. He's got to give it back just as good as Renita's giving it to him right now. Here we go! Look at this shot down to the midsection. And Renita just throws him down to the kid. It's the fifth matchup between these two. What an incredible rivalry it has been. Look at how hard and physical it's getting once it gets into close quarters. That kind of a style will really wear on you, especially in a tournament situation now, where these guys are in their sixth round of action. Oh, McGregor landed it. The Moldova McGregor landed the right. Dimitri Sirvo comes right after him now. Oh, hard shots downstairs by Sirvo. Big shots going in. Look at these two. Still going at it tooth and nail in their sixth round of action. Their second fight of the evening with the fee of gold up for grabs. Back and forth they go. There's still no clear winner. Oh, Renita caught one. And down goes Servo. But it's not being rolled a knockdown. Renita may have caught him with a forearm. Who wants it more? Who's going to stand tall? Who is going to be the FIA featherweight champion of the world? I'm a
Six rounds of action for both of these fighters. And I'm just, I'm sure they're, they're glad it's all over right now. Or is it? Are we going to need a deciding round to have a clear victor? Or have the judges reached a final decision? Let's get the official word here momentarily from our ring announcer, Mike Diamond. Ladies and gentlemen, the referees has decided an extra round. An extra round! I like that. Oh, here we go. One more round. Forget the number, just let them fight until somebody drops. Well, they're both game. They are both game. This is what I like to see. I'm sure it's hell for both these guys, but this is what I want to see. Excellent. Fight. Here we go. A lot of people have come out of their seats now and are standing up here in the Menage Arena. One more round to decide the FIA Featherweight Championship. Fight. Side low kick, Renita out of range with his shots. And oh, referee Julian Sohan really having his hands full here. May have been a slick spot on the canvas. You can see just what kind of an effect these seven rounds have had on these two fighters. And yeah, it is slick out there. Fight. Here comes Renita getting right up in the grill of Sirbu. The bad boy. And the Moldovan McGregor. Fia's most bitter rivalry and the longest lasting rivalry. Whoa, the big swing and a miss that time by Sirbu. These two are really dropping the bomb in there, Renita! Renita connects! Renita connects! Oh, and he just got dumped! Renita just got dumped on the back of his head! The big shot downstairs now by Sirbu! You can hear cheering for both fighters from different parts of the arena. They both have a tremendous amount of supporters in attendance here tonight. Clubbing right hand. We have got to have a winner. There cannot be any draws. Someone must walk out of here the champion. Well, this is just one of those rivalries where they could just fight each other a hundred times. And you could always put them back in the ring again. Look at Renita now, getting physical with Cerebro. Holding on to the arm. Almost got clocked in the back of the dome. Renita downstairs with hard shots. Oh, and another right! Look at Renita now! Renita is landing more powerful punches in this extra round. Oh, and another one! A kick! Right up the middle in the face of Sirbu! Right up the middle! Both men falling to the canvas! Oh, and a hard knee! Renita! Oh, and he's dropping bombs on Sirbu! Renita! Finally! Finally! 
I think Renita's done it. I think Renita has done it. He came through big time in that extra round. Take another look, folks. That was a big round there for Renita. When the time comes and all your cards are on the table, you've got nothing left to hide. You've got to let it all out. This is what via kickboxing is all about. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the 65 kilogram belt, ladies and gentlemen, the winner is for the red corner, Stanislav Renita! Once and for all, Stanislav Renita has finally the proved be by that he the is the, the better of these two fighters. Brain. He has just Good become the Fiat. Featherweight champion of the world! Via President Doran Damir in to present the hardware around the waist of the bad boy. Pavo Zhiroblov in there as well. What a tremendous fight. Hats off to both guys for winning their semifinal matchups. But it was Stanislav Renita, perhaps, who once and for all has proven who is the real champion?